Hi, thanks for watching this video. Let me start by explaining why I chose to create this. I had a client recently who has a Wix blog and I created a 4,000 plus word pillar page for him. When I was uploading the content onto the Wix blog, I could not find a valuable resource that would help me easily put in a table of contents because a post like that needed a table of contents. When I searched online, I found this complicated strategy. I tried the strategy. I kid you not, I spent about 90 minutes trying the strategy and it didn't work. The Wix resources weren't helpful either. So I'm sharing what I did with you so that you can easily create a table of content on our Wix blog. I don't know if the strategy that I used is specific to the template that this particular client had, but I'm hoping that it's something that can actually help you with your Wix blog. I've divided this video into three sections. I want you to understand why a table of content is important for a long form blog post when to include a table of contents and then i will get into the meat of the matter which is teaching you how to create a table of contents on a wix blog so why create a table of contents for a blog post i believe that there are three important benefits of this strategy or this tool or this method that you're going to use to enhance the quality of your blog post the first is easy navigation Remember that your table of contents for your blog post is actually a hyperlinked table of contents. So when somebody clicks on each of the topics that you've included in the table of contents, they'll be able to skip to that portion of your blog post. So it makes the navigation very easy for your reader. It also improves your keyword positioning because you can remember that if you really want your blog post to work, you should do some keyword research that is predicated on or that is dependent on the information that you have gotten from your existing clients. Don't forget that part. So don't do your keyword research until you have first spoken to the clients of the business to get their input in terms of their why for buying the product or the service, what drew them to the company, you know, getting into the, the mind of the actual customers and then using that to inform your keyword research. Anyways, this is not the video for that. What I'm trying to highlight though is that when you have your keyword phrases, especially those long tail keyword phrases, not just the general keyword phrases like nonfiction book or loyalty program, but like the long tail keyword phrases, you can really get a good handle on including them in your blog post by including them in your table of contents because basically it's like you're repeating the headings that you would have already created in your blog post in the table of contents so it gives you more keyword accessibility or keyword usage yes i know that you don't want your keyword density to be high but it's also important to include your long tail keywords as much as possible without affecting your keyword density. Then the third benefit is adding value. So when somebody clicks on a blog post that has a table of contents, they can easily look at the table of contents to see what is included and whether this blog post is really worth their time. Is it really adding value to the conversation? Is it really providing the information that they need? So these are the three reasons for a table of contents being important for your blog. Now the next big question is how long should your post be before you include a table of contents? People have different beliefs about this. I've seen some posts that are like probably a thousand or a thousand two hundred words long and they have a table of contents. To me, it's more beneficial if the table of contents is included on lengthy posts. So not, so posts that you can't just do, do, you can't just see everything when you go to the website. Like if you're on a desktop and you just visit the website and you can already see the entire post on the page, 
or you can just do one scroll and see the the entire post i would recommend a table of contents for that what i would recommend is a table of contents for lengthy posts posts that are 2000 plus words in length because it makes it much easier to navigate the post and people will be able to see the value that the post is providing by just looking at the table of contents i'm not going to use an example of a wix blog to explain how to create a table of contents i'm now in the wix blog and this is just a dummy post that i have created so that i can explain what you should do this is the post title which is abcs of budgeting and then these are the headings so you need to ensure that the blog is basically already written and you have your headings there because you're going to need these headings for your table of contents now what you're going to do you can either copy the heading like copy here Control c or command c if you have a mac and then paste there and then change the paragraph format or you can actually type out the heading so you can say set financial target as the second one i'll just type it out What you're going to do now is highlight the first heading that you want to link to. Click this link button, then click section. Then you see all of your sections here. You click the relevant section, which would be this one. Click save. There you go. You have a hyperlinked table of content heading. And you do the same for each heading. So now you have a complete table of contents. All of these are hyperlinked. When you publish it, I'm not going to publish this one, but when you publish this, you will see the links pop up. And you can, your reader will be able to click on the links and navigate to each area of the post, which is very important. If you want to change the formatting, you can change it like how you would normal text. I want to make it bold, whatever you want to do. You can change the color too if you want. Whatever you want to do to make it look appropriate for your brand. But I'm so happy that I discovered this after spending about 90 minutes trying to figure out how to do this and going through code and all of this. When all I had to do was follow this strategy and it would take me like two minutes or less so I hope this helps